So get this. Now they've claimed they found man-made structures underneath the Sahara or Sahara, wherever you're from, pronunciation police. And it shatters mainstream history. So you know we about to dive right in and check this out. So if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. Here we go. The world is a wondrous and confusing place. The advancement of science and history and expansion of our knowledge of the earth gives us a more comprehensive view of our world than ever before. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at mysterious discoveries. Stone tools discovered in the Sahara Desert. A very early relative of Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, evolved an astonishing two million years ago and is largely believed to be the first humanoid species that travelled the world, beginning in Africa and travelling into many far-reaching parts of Europe and Asia. Although their bodies were physiologically similar to modern human bodies, they had a smaller brain and a larger, heavier forehead than we do today. Nevertheless, they are considered the first step in the evolution of the human species, and it is believed that several intervening species, such as Hydrobagensis and Homo antecessor, resulted from the travels of Homo erectus. Because of this, scientists and anthropologists carefully study the movements of Homo erectus and look for any clues as to where they went on their migrations and what they might have been doing along the way. The latest of these clues was discovered when hundreds of ancient stone tools were uncovered by miners reopening a previously abandoned Saharan desert gold mine in northeastern Sudan. There was a veritable trove of the tools, from cleavers to hand axes and many stone flakes that led archaeologists to believe that the area might have been a workshop where the tools were chiseled. These flakes are known archaeologically as debitage and can give researchers clues as to the craftsmanship and style of the resulting tools. The area was very carefully excavated and the sediment layers above the tools were analysed for any clues that could give researchers insight into the activities of the hominids that created and used them. And what they discovered was both shocking and exciting. The sediment layer above the site dated back almost 400,000 years, meaning that the tools themselves are almost certainly much, much older. <laughs> One professor from the Institute of Archaeology of the University of Wroclaw guesses that, based on the workmanship displayed in the tools, they are between 700,000 and a staggering 1 million years old. This would wow. mean that this workshop is the oldest known record of tool manufacturing in the region. Part of what makes this find so exciting is that usually tools and other artifacts found in deserts cannot be accurately dated, as the sediment layers have mixed over time and distorted the chronology. However, because these were found deep underground in a gold mine that has been carefully excavated in order to safely dig down and search for the ore, the deep sediment layers were still intact, and an accurate evaluation was able to be made. It appears that the Homo erectus that were using this workshop of sorts broke off quartzite cores and chiseled them into cleavers and other tools featuring a transverse edge, and archaeologists believe that the site was also used for working with wood, bones and other organic matter that was not preserved so bones. well in the intervening years. However, the remaining stone is definitely a major find that can tell us a lot about how these first hominids lived and worked as they slowly evolved into the Homo sapiens of today. Nanorobots destroying cancer cells. Nanobots are compact robots that range in size from 1 to 100 nanometers. Nanobots are being studied so that they can help assist in medicine and healthcare, including cancer treatment and blood vessel unblocking. Nanorobots are a reputable new technology with a wide range of applications. However, the majority of the applications we have studied so far have been related to medicine. One of the most common uses for nanobots is to imitate red blood cells. Mm. Robert Freitas Jr., a futurist, suggested the construction of respiracytes, which are hypothetical artificial red blood cells that can be utilized to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide via the bloodstream. 
The respirocyte is roughly 1 micron, that is 1,000 nanometers in size, which is six times smaller than a regular red blood cell. This architecture would allow the robots to travel through even the tiniest capillaries, ensuring considerably more effective oxygen supply to tissue than organic red blood cells could. It is also built to transport 236 times the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide as a normal red blood cell. Working respirocytes would provide huge medicinal benefits. To begin with, the technology will aid scientists in the development of effective and long-lasting artificial blood substitute fluids for use in blood transfusions and first aid situations. Its capacity to wiggle through blood vessels and transmit more oxygen to the brain could provide patients with cardiovascular disease a fresh lease on life. Wow. Hemostasis is another area where nanorobots can be useful. Hemostasis is a technique for preventing and stopping bleeding by keeping blood contained within a broken blood vessel, enabling the wound to heal. The typical time for natural hemostasis to occur is five minutes, which can make a tremendous difference in critical situations. Nanobots may be able to aid in the speeding up of this process. On command from its control computer, a 2 micron nanobot with biodegradable fiber mesh as thin as 0.8 nanometers would be deployed in the wound. When the soluble thin coating... That's what I was wondering now, what this got to do with the Sahara, I don't care, but uh, <laughs> nothing but, you know me, I come from, my mom was a cancer t uh, patient for the longest, battled it for almost oh, 30 years, over 30 years, almost 30 years, you know what I mean, so she succumbed to it. So anytime I hear something like that, I'm all for it. And I was wondering, I was like, okay, well then how do they get these nanobots in your system to combat and fight different things like that and assist the red blood cells and stuff like that? And it was like injecting it in the womb. So that's pretty crazy. Nanometers would be deployed in the wound. When the soluble thin coating parts of the mesh come into touch with plasma water, they break down and trap the blood cells in simultaneously occurring artificial nettings, thus stopping the bleeding. Even in big wounds, this mechanism may allow complete hemostasis in as little as one second. Another possible medical usage for nanorobots is a disease-fighting machine. Ultrasound-powered nanorobots that can glide through blood and eradicate hazardous bacteria have been built by engineers at the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Imagine this actually working and being a huge success. All those people on Instagram that are telling you your diseases and different things from what you're eating and stuff like that. And I ain't knocking them because I listen to a lot of them. But now what they going to do? What they going to say? And that still don't mean y'all just run out and eat all these crazy fried foods and pack your stomach crazy and stuff like that, bro. But... This would be a huge step in the right direction, man, for a lot of people. Wow. The robot's main objective is to detoxify and sanitize biological fluids, according to Berta Esteban Fernandez de Villa, co-first writer and senior researcher in Wang's research group at UC San Diego. Nonetheless, it is heartening to see new technologies tackle challenges that we have had for a long time. Nanorobotics is a fascinating prospect. So I'm going to have to go look this up to see when this is supposed to be, you know, actively going on. People, they're going to start doing it and, and testing human trials with it. I got to go look this up. Y'all ain't going to give us that information. <laughs> Shigir Idol older than experts thought. The Shigir Idol, considered by historians and archaeologists as the world's oldest wooden sculpture, is shaped in the form of a human with an eerie looking face. It is currently on display at the Sverdlovsk Regional Museum of Local Law in Russia. Researchers have now determined that it may date back even further than they originally estimated. The idol was discovered in 1890 in the Ural Mountains of Russia. It is named after the Shigir peat bog in which it was found. In 2018, scientists believed that it had been carved roughly 11,500 years ago. However, those same researchers recently concluded that it had been created 12,100 years prior, a full 600 years earlier than the initial estimate. We was off by a little bit. To understand bit. how old that is, consider when other ancient relics were constructed. Stonehenge dates to around 5,000 years ago, 
while the Great Pyramids of Giza were over 4,500 years ago. At 12,000 years old, this wooden idol would have existed during the Quaternary Extinction, which occurred around 10,000 years ago, and saw the disappearance of Ice Age megafauna and large woolly mammals. This is not some tiny wooden object either. It stands at about 5.3 meters tall and features human faces and geometric patterns. According to researchers at the State Agency of Heritage Service in Germany, this new estimated age makes it the world's earliest wooden monumental sculpture. The research team spent some time reanalyzing the average radiocarbon dates that they had published in 2018. At that time, the age range was from 12,500 to 8,600 years ago, giving them an average of 11,500 years old. However, wax and wood pigment were used on the idol to maintain its condition and repair any damage. They found that wax reconstruction began nearly 120 years ago, and the stain in the 1990s. The scientists believe that these treatments would have influenced the results to appear younger, as radiocarbon dating calculates the ratio of decaying radioactive carbon isotropes. Instead, the researchers decided to sample the wood's innermost parts from the reconstructed surface since the treatments did not alter them. With that, they concluded the wood dated to 12,250 years ago. However, they are also aware that the wood came from the heart of a tree, which would have died long before it was cut down and used for construction. Although the organic wood material died 12,250 years ago, they estimate that it was felled roughly 150 years later. Historians also analyzed the idol's design, linking it to other artifacts with geometric motifs that have been discovered to date about 12,100 years ago as well. We commonly see simple lines and zigzags as decoration during the late Paleolithic and early Mesolithic eras. The sculpture gives us another small insight into what our early ancestors were doing and where they were migrating to. Wow. Afterlife feels even more real than real, research says. What? All of us wonder what will happen when we depart from this life. Some think they have the answer, and some accept that they will never know. However, there are a select few that can tell us exactly what happens after we depart from life. Once you go to heaven and live to talk about it, your story will shock the world. Picture this, it is the perfect day. You are on your Sunday stroll through the neighborhood, listening to the songs of birds, soaking up the sun and gazing up at a cloudless sky of pure bliss. Peacefully distracted, you step off the pavement into the street. Brakes screech, horns blare, shock and horror overtake the space. You snap back to reality just as the truck hits you. You are numb and unexplainably dazed. You ask, is this the end? And you know the answer. You are floating above yourself, looking down. People crowd over your lifeless body. The air is buzzing with muted screams. A warm light opens above you. It beckons softly. You follow it as it compels you to a place that feels even more alive than you have ever felt. An indescribable bliss covers you and you know that you made it only to wake up to the mundane beeps of an ECG monitor next to your hospital bed. The magic is over. The science begins. Near-death experiences or NDEs are nothing short of fascinating. Now, I often question, because we've heard these stories before, people saying, you know what I mean, what they've seen in situations, maybe something similar to that, or however it is where they saw the light and different things, or they felt the heat and saw the fire, you know? I often ask myself, you know, is that could that possibly be a dream state? Like, you know what I mean? I, I, how could we know? How do we know for sure? We just have to take that person's word, I guess. Patients in intensive care are scared to tell their stories. Dr. Stephen Lorres of the Coma Science Group states. They are afraid people won't take them seriously, especially doctors and scientists. True. People who experience this once-in-a-lifetime journey are often changed forever. Many claim to be happier than they have ever been and some no longer fear departing from life. The experience becomes a cornerstone of their lives. 
Many psychological tests have revealed that memories of ND experiences are much more vivid than any other memory. Mm. Those who have experienced NDEs claim that their brush with death felt even more real than real, Lorries says. The true magic of these events is that almost everyone that experiences an NDE has a similar story to tell. Stories from people across cultural, ethnic and religious perspectives will often have the same experience. After being close to passing over, some people will report having had an out-of-body experience, having seen a bright light or being passed through a tunnel, all well-known elements of the famous NDE, according to recent studies. One patient of the study claimed, I felt as if I was sucked out of my body at one point. I was going through a completely black tunnel very, very quickly, a speed you cannot express because you just don't experience it. His journey continued when he said, a light appeared at the end of the tunnel. The light was female and she indescribably communicated with me. Wow. Sheesh. Researchers have grown human embryos from skin cells. Science is advancing at an exceptional rate. By Scary reprogramming rate. human cells found on our skin, biologists have managed to grow model versions of human embryos. This scientific breakthrough allows us the potential to learn more about developmental disorders, how to cure... Uh, although I have a fascination with science now, it utterly and truly scares me what their capabilities are, what they are capable of doing, creating, making. I know if my imagination is crazy, just imagine. Cure genetic illnesses and maybe Sheesh. even could lead to solving infertility specifically in the case of improving IVF treatments. From skin? Nature Today published a study that found that when you treat skin cells in a certain manner, they begin to transform into embryo-like structures. Jun Wu, the leader of a US-Chinese scientific research group, reported such findings in his own studies, referring to early forming embryonic structures named blastocysts. Once again, as with each scientific breakthrough that occurs, we must ask ourselves whether the way forward is or is not moral. Is it morally correct for us to play with life? As it would give us the power to have live models of human embryonic development. Or is it wrong, unjust and horrific? In the last five decades, we've found out an immense amount of information regarding how organs work. Primarily due to the progress in stem cell research wherein scientists could produce human organs from human tissue outside the body. It is these organoids, miniature faux organs grown with the usage of our tissue, that let us know what happens to victims of the Zika infection and has granted us infinite medical knowledge that is priceless. It is also due to these studies that we have our current advanced ways of dealing with cancer, which we would not have without the arguably morally grey investigations. Whilst these skin cell embryos could show us how embryos form, and the very basic, early developments that occur during the first stages of pregnancy, they cannot give us insight into the complex specifics of what happens in the womb. After all, the lining of the uterus is required to establish a long-term pregnancy, but these models might still provide us with the answers we seek. Wow. An important thing to keep in mind is that these model embryos are not actual human embryos in the traditional sense. Whether they could be turned into actual embryos is uncertain, but considered unlikely. Regardless of the fact these are not real embryos with the potential to grow into babies, many countries have strict laws when it comes to embryonic research. Because they know where it's headed. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community. Came here for things under Sahara Desert and left with all kind of other different technology information, bro. <laughs> huh? Who else is giving you that type of information? But um, listen, man, that's that whole death thing. I know y'all have heard the stories, bro, and it freaks me out to even hear them sometimes and just think about it. You know, you just want to live your life to the fullest. But I don't know, man. Like I said, just a, one small percent of me be like, you know, is that a dream state? Is that real? Do they ha now have the answers? Like if we could study a person that has had that, as they call it, NDE, near-death experience, 
if we could just sit there and study that person, I'd be interested to see. Because you could tell by how a person continues to live their life. They get up and they just being reckless and maybe they they saw what they like. I, I don't know. You couldn't tell because maybe they living reckless because they like what they saw when they're and they want to go back. Or maybe they living reckless because they don't believe it. So, I don't know. We just have to study them and see. But y'all get at me in the conversation. Let me know what you think. And I'll stick around and stay tuned. I'm gone. Peace.